now remember, a direct object um, are Hey guys, and welcome to your weekly Spanish review with Andreina. That's me. Uh, before you watch this video, in case you haven't done this yet, make sure you check out the new podcast, Lenguaje de la Vida. There's a new episode this week, and you can find it on Spotify and YouTube. And then make sure you head to the website, thelanguagemovement.com so that you can print out the vocab and exercise worksheet for this week. Um, so this video will make a lot more sense because everything that we review in this video are things that you're going to practice uh, with your Spanish worksheet that I put on the website. So if you haven't done it, stop this video, go to the website, print it out, and if you have done it, good for you. You're an excellent language student. So let's get started. So this week, it was pretty easy, nothing too crazy. Um, we reviewed five regular AR verbs and they were comprar, manejar, llegar, montar. So only four. Oh, silly me. Okay, uh, now most of these we worked on the present tense. So remember, AR verbs, super easy to conjugate in the present tense. So, yo compro, tú manejas, él, ella, llega, nosotros montamos, ustedes compran. Okay, very, very easy. Um, there's also on the worksheet one regular IR verb and the verb is cubrir, okay? Again, we worked on the present tense with this verb, so it's going to be yo cubro, tú cubres, él, ella, usted cubre, nosotros cubrimos, ustedes cubren. Um, so, remember the difference between AR verbs in the present, IR verbs in the present. But, I'm sure you got this. Okay, now next we learned a new phrase. And the phrase is, estar aprovechando. Now remember, estar is the verb to be, and it's the verb to be. There's two of them, there's estar and ser. And a star is the non-permanent one. So it goes with emotions, conditions, locations. So things that can change from one day to the next. Okay? Um, now, you conjugate this kind of like a regular AR verb. But remember, in the yo form, it's irregular. So it's yo estoy with an OY. Tu estás, nosotros estamos, etc. Now, when we have the verb estar and we add the present progressive aprovechando, which is from the verb aprovechar, it means um, to be taking advantage of, but it's usually, it's usually, you know, like a positive thing. So in the podcast, I talked about taking advantage of the summer to travel. So estoy aprovechando del verano para viajar, okay? Um, so it's a great phrase to know. Um, okay, next we move on to a little bit of a more complicated uh, thing, but it's only one. So we have one stem changing verb that I put for you on your worksheet. Um, the verb is servir. Now this verb, um, it's stem changing E to I. So it's S-E-R-V-I-R, -E and when you conjugate it, that first E is going to change to an I. So it's going to be yo sirvo, tú sirves, él, ella, usted sirve, nosotros 
servimos, so there's no change in the nosotros form, that's the only one, and then ustedes sirven. So, eat IE in all the forms in the present tense except nosotros. Um, yeah, good verb to know, especially if you're, you know, like at a restaurant or something. All right, next little complicated grammar thing that we worked on this week. So make sure you print out the worksheet so that you can follow along. So we had one use of the direct object pronoun, okay? Um, and the phrase was nos refresco. Now, we use the verb refrescar, which is to kind of like freshen up, to cool down. Um, I talked about, what did I talk about? Hmm. Oh, I talked about, if you've listened to the podcast, I talked about going on a bike ride. And the wind from the bike ride kind of like cooled us down. So I said, el viento nos refrescó. So I used refrescó in the past tense. Um, so it's, so that's why it ends in an O there. But the most important thing is the nos form. So N-O-S is the direct object pronoun for us. Okay, so in English, I would say the wind cooled or refreshed us. So it goes after the verb. But in Spanish, you would put it in front of the verb. So the direct object pronoun for us in Spanish is nos, and you put it in front of the verb. So you say nos refresco okay if you wanted to say it refreshed me me refresco te refresco le refresco nos refresco okay so the use of the direct object pronoun is pretty easy it does get more complicated if you add more verbs you know um, like if you're talking about the future tense but for right now all you have to do is be able to recognize it and it's pretty easy Okay, now, back to easy things. Let's calm back down. So, we had two adjectives in your worksheet. Um, the first one is antigua or antigua. And if, it, if you've ever been to Guatemala, I'm sure you recognize this. It's, you know, antigua, a beautiful city. I love going there. Um, but it means kind of like ancient or old or vintage or antique would probably be the best thing. Um, so just your regular verb, masculine, antiguo, feminine, antigua. I think in the podcast I talked about going to this store that sells really cool, like old, antique Coca-Cola stuff. So, um, cosas antiguas de Coca-Cola. Um, what's next? Oh, the, s oh, the second adjective is actually the word second so segundo um, so remember first is primero and i actually went over the use of primer and primero um, on instagram so make sure you follow us there too and then segundo is second so segundo or segunda pretty easy and then four beautiful nouns that we went over um el kimbombo which was actually a new word for me. I had to look it up. And I think it's a pretty cool word. Um, number two, la destilería. Number three, la espera, which comes from the verb esperar, to wait. So you turn it into a noun. La espera is the wait. And number four, los desierto o el desierto. Um, talk, I talked about seeing the desert out west because we traveled a lot. So that's what the podcast was about. And these are all the things that you really need to um, work on for this week. And I hope this video kind of helped give you a little bit of explanation. And again, make sure you go to the website. Actually, I'm going to link it down below um, and you can just go there work on all these things there's a vocab list and there's comprehension questions based on what i wrote 
And then there's personal questions that you can either write down for yourself or you can take the time to film a video like this and film yourself speaking it, which is obvious, like always the best way to practice a language, speaking it. And that's it for today. I hope you join us next week and goodbye.